Um, another clearing event, NVIDIA. You expect it to be a bullish clearing event? I mean, most likely, I, I think markets get very hesitant in front of NVIDIA's earnings. Really? So once that's behind us, we'll see demand is strong, and I think market breathes a sigh of relief. And then we did get a little bit maybe bullish or over our skis, so we pulled back to a support level where you feel more comfortable. That's right. I think most of the major indices have pulled back to what would be technically viewed by our technician Mark Newton as support. So the NASDAQ is on the support line. S&P did a 60% retrace of its recent rally, and small caps have held above their prior highs. These are all bullish support levels. It's more than a two-week rally, maybe, in your view. That's right. And I think maybe markets are course-correcting because now with Doge, the Gov Department of Government Efficiency, there may be cuts to health care and industrials because of defense spending. So things that investors can focus on more deregulation of animal spirits, more like small caps and financials. Uh, NVIDIA upcoming earnings report is another potential turning point. Uh, markets get very hesitant in front of NVIDIA's earnings, Lee said, adding. Yeah. Uh, they've both fallen. They've both fallen to sub 40 percent. So it, uh, you know, part of it is Kevin Warsh has moved up and Mark Rowan has moved up. We're using poly market to decide who's <laughs> going to be the, the Treasury Secretary. Stranger things have happened, right? So that's you think we hear this week and that'll remove uncertainty or you, that's not the most important thing? Well, I, I think as we remove uncertainty, so it may not be announced in the next week or so. I, I think that's a like what I'd consider a clearing event. It takes away some uncertainty, okay. uncertainty and the Trump trade, I think, is still intact. The Fed... Uh, Last week, uh, markets were a little taken by surprise when Fed Chair Powell. Powell said he might, you know, slow things down for December. But if you look at December 2025, a year from now, the number of implied cuts is still the same. So I think he's dovish. He's just moving some of the timing. Tom Lee, head of research at Fundstrat Global Advisors, on Tuesday, optimism about the uh, the markets despite recent uncertainties emphasizing that the trump trade is still intact yeah i i think it's going to be a, a tough period for visibility for healthcare because um you know even recent comments about how much healthcare spending dominates advertising mm -hmm. um, when you're not in the political cycle and you're right there's there's concerns about safety of certain vaccines and rfk being in charge of hhs so i would just say there's clouds there's Still going to be opportunities probably in biotechs, but it's going to be challenging. Once that's behind us, we'll see demand is strong, and I think the market breathes a sigh of relief. Lee outlined the key elements of what he calls the Trump trade, which has pushed Bitcoin to make a new high in the same year. A ghastly mispackage, the decline of a Dutch bank, and low best person removal derived from deregulation, low taxes, and pro business policies. Yeah, that's right. I think if someone set a number and said 20 PE is the cap and they faded the market every time, they would have left so many years of gains on the table. Um, I think median PE at around 18 times isn't too demanding for the S&P yet. And you know, the 10-year at 4.5 is still over a 20 PE for a 10-year bond. So I think the S&P is an evaluation unrealistic story yet. And then, of course, small caps are much cheaper with the median P.E. closer to 12 times now. So I, I think NVIDIA has been consolidating over the last eight weeks, echoing a June to December lull that followed a pretty explosive move in stocks. If fiscal coin is the end of that consolidation, that means NVIDIA could have a pretty big move. And I think it's going to pull money off the sidelines. There's still a lot of cash on the sidelines. And now with NVIDIA behind us, I think investors are going to be putting money to work. <laughs> I'd, if I was concerned about valuation, I would just look at smaller caps or mid caps. So in the next six months to a year, what type of gains do you think would be reasonable for the S&P with the Trump trade intact? But between, uh, well, you know, at least between now and your end, five to 10 percent still makes sense between to us. Between now and your end. Yeah. So something over six thousand, like sixty three hundred. And then next year. And then. I think we'd build upon those gains early next year because I think inflation is, is even softening and there's room for more Fed cuts. And so that would be a dovish development. Frank Lee has been the most optimistic, raising his target to $200, implying a potential 36.78% upside. Um, he likes easy money. He likes low regulation. He likes lower taxes. Uh, there's a lot more than a two-week rally, in my view, Lee said. 
NVIDIA's revenue can surge tenfold from here and hit $1 trillion by the end of the decade, said analysts at Fundstrat Global Advisors. Fundstrat's Tom Lee. Benign Fed rate cut, solid NVIDIA report, can fuel stock gains. Oh, I think, uh, I think tech is still in a good place because of uh, AI, and in, NVIDIA uh, should reinforce that, Lee said, ahead of the Org uh, 28 release of the AI chipmakers Q2 results. Lee said NVIDIA's multiple isn't demanding. NVIDIA is maybe 28 times forward earnings, which for one of the most important companies in the world, it's, it's not a high multiple, he said. So um, if tech is in a good place and then we get Fed cuts, I think it allows the overall market to expand. And there's more where that came from, says our call of the day from Fundstrat's co-founder and head of research, Tom Lee, who sees a wall of pent-up investor cash flooding markets following NVIDIA results. I think there's a lot of hesitation out there, but in our view, markets are going to rally post NVIDIA results, and so I'd recommend being overweight stocks into NVIDIA's reports, he told clients in an update. He notes, investors have positioned themselves extremely cautiously ahead of the tech behemoth's results, citing data that shows over the last three weeks, cash balances have been rising for both institutional and retail investors. Cash balances rose $16 billion just in the past week. A significant amount of added liquidity on the sidelines, said Lee. Anecdotally, in our recent conversations with institutional investors, we get the sense the investors have been cautious ahead of NVDA results because of the size and importance of the company to the broader technology thesis, he said. His post-NVIDIA rally prediction is backed by some stats on the typical market reaction to the last eight results. The average is 20% plus in the last two years, so we think the probabilities favour. A big move post Wednesday's results, he said. The strategist said, seasonal factors also remain positive for the month. For example, when the first quarter is positive and April is negative for the S&P 500, May is higher 73% of the time in data stretching back to 1927. And June in those circumstances, was positive 100% of the time, with a median gain of nearly 4%, he notes. NVIDIA's NVDA revenue can surge tenfold from here and hit $1 trillion by the end of the decade, said analysts at Fundstrat Global Advisors. NVIDIA's revenue could be a trillion dollars by the end of the decade, and NVIDIA's revenues are $100 billion right now. So NVIDIA itself can be a 10x, the analysts mentioned in an interview with investing journalist Natalie Brunel. The comments come in response to a question about the previous prediction that the S&P 500 could surge as high as 1, 500, 0 by 2030. NVIDIA Corp, NASDAQ, is maybe 28 times forward earnings, which for one of the most important companies in the world, it's not a high multiple. So if tech is in a good place and then we get Fed cuts, I think it allows the overall market to expand, Lee said. Analysts are bracing for NVIDIA Corp, now Nasdaq NVDA, earnings scheduled for a release later this month. Jeffries said in the latest note that the company will smash analyst expectations for the quarter. We expect another strong beat in July and strong guidance into October with beats of about $1 B for the results and guide, analysts said. Analysts at Jefferies also believe the demand for NVIDIA's hopper chips is strong. NVIDIA Corp at Square's reception not defined as a bad thing. It's instead to see, to see the high potential for a range of environmentally friendly investment opportunities. This sets the stage for an immediate readedness, starting with furniture. Visibility will actually increase as demand moves from hopper to Blackwell, as the constraint will shift back to silicon. Um, Honey 100 lead times are short, but H200 lead times are already long, and Blackwell should be even longer, the firm said. However, the latest big tech earnings have raised some concerns about NVIDIA Corp, NASDAQ NVDA, future growth trajectory. 
The company's major customers, including Meta Platforms and Alphabet, have indicated that they may be overbuilding and overspending on AI chips. NVIDIA Corp, NASDAQ NVDA, is selling about 2 million of its GPUs on an annual basis, based on 2023 data. As demand moderates and competitors up their production, the company won't be able to sustain its current growth trajectory. Raymond James analyst Javed Mirza recently said in a report that NVDA has triggered a mechanical cell signal based on a moving average convergence slash divergence indicator. In a technical analysis report, he stated that the stock is trading below its 50-day moving average and exhibiting early signs of selling pressure. This, according to Musa, shows there is a looming corrective phase lasting one three months. He added that a sustained break below the 50-day moving average could lead to a decline towards 94.94, representing a further 16.9% drop from current levels. Investors are closely watching NVIDIA's upcoming earnings report set to release tomorrow following the bell. Recent reports of overheating issues with the company's new Blackwell GPUs have raised concerns about potential delays and design changes. Investors will be looking for insights and the company's overall outlook during the earnings call. When installed in high-capacity server racks, NVIDIA's next-generation Blackwell data center processors overheat. This has led to the need to redesign the server racks, which in turn could potentially delay shipping for the processors. If the redesign and shipping of the processors do not occur on time, NVIDIA's major customers, Google, Microsoft, Meta, etc., will be forced to delay their own timelines. As NVIDIA prepares to release its earnings report next week, several top analysts have increased their price targets for the company. HSBC's Susquehanna's Christopher Rowland and Oppenheimer's Rich Schaefer also increased their targets to $180 and $175, respectively. In contrast, Raymond James's Srini Pajuri lowered his target to $170, although he still views any potential dip in NVIDIA's stock price as a buying opportunity. NVIDIA is scheduled to report its third quarter financial results a week from today. Analysts predict a rise of 82% year-over-year in sales to $33.04 billion and an earnings increase to $0.75 cents a share. The Susquehanna Financial Group raised its price target for NVIDIA from 160 to 180. NVIDIA's stock price increased today following a positive analyst report from Mizuho. The firm raised its price target for the company to $165 from $140. This bullish sentiment has contributed to NVIDIA's stock price nearing recent record highs. Melius Research increased its price target for NVIDIA to $185, previously $165, with a buy rating on the stock. NVIDIA has officially joined the Dow Jones Industrial Average. NVIDIA's stock price has risen by about 9% this week, surpassing Apple as the world's most valuable company. The Federal Reserve delivered a 25 basis point interest rate cut today, bringing its benchmark rate down to a range of 4.5% to 4.75%. The market reacted positively to the news, with shares of NVIDIA hitting new all-time highs. Several stocks surged on Wall Street today following the US presidential election. NVIDIA hit a record high, solidifying its position as the world's most valuable company, with a market capitalization of $3.58 trillion. NVIDIA has claimed its position as the world's most valuable publicly traded company, surpassing Apple. This surge in valuation is the result of an unprecedented demand for the company's high-performance graphics processing units, GPUs, which are essential for powering artificial intelligence and machine learning applications. NVIDIA's revenue could be a trillion dollars by the end of the decade, and NVIDIA's revenues are a hundred billion right now. So NVIDIA itself can be a 10x, the analysts mentioned in an interview with investing journalist Natalie Brunel. The comments come in response to a question about the previous prediction that the S&P 500 could surge as high as 1, 500, 0 by 2030. They explain that the world is running out of prime age workers, leading to a shift where wages are increasingly paid to companies that produce automated solutions. 
This trend could funnel nearly $4 trillion annually into the S&P 500 by 2030, the analyst noted. They brought up the 2008 financial crisis as a historical reference, highlighting how S&P earnings rebounded from $60 to $280 per share in 14 years, despite initial skepticism from some analysts. They believe similar growth is achievable due to demographic shifts and increased automation spending. And P earnings are going to be over $1,000 per share in the near future, they stated. As companies like NVIDIA capitalize on AI, their revenues could soar, reflecting the broader economic shift from human labor to machine output. The analysts emphasize the importance of looking at long-term trends, noting that past predictions often underestimated the market's potential for recovery and growth. NVIDIA continues to be one of the biggest drivers of the stock market's ongoing bull run, with the chipmaker's shares surging nearly 150% since the start of 2024. That marks a broad outperformance compared to the S&P 500, which added 16.5% during that period. But what happened, speaking on CNBC, um, Lee highlighted several factors that could drive a more bullish outlook in the coming weeks, including upcoming clearing events, such as the announcement of the next Treasury Secretary and NVIDIA's earnings report. Lee noted that speculation over the Treasury Secretary appointment has created some market hesitation, but expects clarity soon. As we remove uncertainty, it takes away some uncertainty and... and the Trump trade, I think, is still intact, he said. He pointed to predictive markets like Polymarket, where front runners for the role have fluctuated, further fueling investor anticipation. Lee also addressed the Federal Reserve's position, noting that while recent remarks from Chair Jerome Powell signaled a slowdown in rate cuts, the overall trajectory remains dovish. If you look at December 2025, the number of implied cuts is still the same. I think he's dovish, he's just moving some of the timing, Lee explained. From a technical perspective, Lee observed that major indices, including the Nasdaq and S&P 500, as tracked by the SPDR S&P 500 ETF Trust SPY, have pulled back to critical support levels, which could bolster further gains. The Nasdaq is on the support line, S&P did a 60% retrace of its recent rally, and small caps have held above their prior highs, he noted. However, Lee cautioned about challenges in the healthcare sector, pointing to potential spending cuts and policy changes under Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as potential head of health and human services. It's going to be a tough period for visibility for healthcare. There are clouds, but still opportunities, probably in biotechs, he explained.